Hi, I am Cristobal Velasquez, computer engineer and game developer, and I will talk a little bit about uh, my thesis work at the University of Chile. Uh, I did a, a small uh, game engine um, using TypeScript, WebGL, GLSL, and uh, and uh, the net network framework is netcore so let's start with uh, the design of the game objects that is uh, basically the one of the most important parts of uh, the design design of a game engine uh, we use this uh, component what pattern and we have the game objects and a list of our components um, that can reference uh, the objects that belongs and we have an uh, API of the object uh, a list of methods to interact with those components and the main idea of using this um, pattern is that somewhere in the in the game loop we can use this simple code to execute it execute um, all the game logic so we we do a for loop and um, using all the game objects in the scene and we get all his components and we execute um, all the components update in and it's in update that we executed the main code of the components and um, we use uh, author calls to like awake and start at the beginning of the game to mainly to initial initialize uh, the components and the game in general so let's jump into the code a, a little bit um it has uh, 10 packages and let's see what they do asset manager it's a package for um interacting with uh, assets um, it's a very important part of of a game engine but is often um not very um visible because it is hidden from the developer it's something that um we we try to hide to them so in this case, I use uh, an interface and, uh, with the name of the asset and the data could be anything. The idea is to implement that interface. Um, that every asset is different to, to implement. So in this case, um, we have a, an image and the image can be used in textures or shaders. So um the way to do it um it's uh, you have to take in consideration that it's um it's a web application so you have to use in this case a html image elements and hidden inside the the, the browser so uh, the the user of the engine doesn't have to to watch the image so the idea is to transform it into a HTML element uh, from a, a, a normal image and to do that we have to use promises uh, to get them uh, from a folder inside our, our project so that's basically it uh, we have one for JSON to and in this case we use JSONs to represent um, mesh elements like 3D objects and 2D uh, normals um, etc and we have a text asset loader for uploading text and this was used to uh, upload shaders and here we have that it can read a GL, GLSL or fragments for from that, that type of data and we use promises to to load the the assets here we have the asset loader that um, is an interface of how 
every asset is loaded. Here we have the promise. Uh, here we have the the function that hides everything. The, the user only have to use load asset, and um, the engine will do everything. And the extension will determine will determine uh, how we load the, the, that asset. Uh, let's see a little bit of the game object design. Um, uh, as I I show you before, uh, it's a basic structure and uh, have a name, a list of uh, I components, and a transform. A transform is very important. It determines completely the position of, of the game object, and it's later used uh, to to um, render the shaders uh, to the game so let's see a little bit of the of the transform and the transform have a position uh, the object that belongs and have um, a rotation to here and it's a quaternion that's it it's a structure for um, holding rotation and uh, here we have some vectors that determine uh, where the object is facing uh, his up vector his forward vector and his right vector and we have some functions to rotate and, and destroy and everything else uh, for game objects too, we have this function to get components inside them, uh, like in every game engine, and we have function to add components too. Let's see the um, the I component interface. Now it's an abstract class. Uh, we have a boolean to enable or, di or disable. This is for or um, instead of destroying a component, is better in some cases to only disable and enable laser when we want. And here we have uh, the this uh, function that, that are very important in the in the game engine in general. And these are the calls that the engine do. Um, awake uh, at the beginning of the when the game engine starts the start is when the game starts so it's uh, a little bit later um, update is executed every frame um, destroy is to destroy the, uh, this component um, so sometimes we want to uh, clean some data especially for components that work with shaders because uh, cherry shaders work at a GPU level so um, we can have a data uh, in GPU that will not disappear if we not uh, do this and later we have this um, physics re related calls like on, on trigger enter and it's called where when, when the component component have a collider component inside and we enter that collider we have on trigger that is called every frame that we are inside a collider and on trigger exit that is the frame that we are out of the of the trigger um fix update that is called uh, every one third of a second it's a constant uh, call so it's more reliable that update that uh, depends of the um, of the performance of the computer that the game engine is being executed so it's more useful for fu physics fun functions Uh, let's see how we can implement a component. We only have to extend the iComponent class 
and we override those calls or the calls that we want to use and this is our control component it's um it's a normal um component that is used to control a, a character inside the game so here we have uh, how we can implement one of these we use the input class that um, capture the the keyboard of the player so here we have um, in the up to update function how we are capturing the input of the player and we are moving the transform of the player a little a little bit uh, in every direction Uh, here we override the our trigger enter to watch for a collectible component in the other collider so we can collect those uh, collectibles and we can add them to this local variable uh, total collectibles and we, when we have five the the game will end and we sh will we will change the scene to the, the, the final scene here we have some coroutines uh, that are implemented. Uh, coroutines are very key in, in game engines, so I implemented them in, in this game engine. And they are executed uh, frame by frame by the game engine, so you can create uh, some very special function like, in this case, uh, the following coroutine. It's uh, a type of simulation of gravity, so it's called every frame, and it's uh, reducing the the y position of the element by uh, a little bit every frame. So it's, it simulates the the gravity of an object, and it it is executed uh, always. And we have here a coroutine for jumping, and how we are adding some uh, y uh, position every frame to meanwhile we are jumping. Here we have another component like uh, directional lights. Uh, here we have a, a moving platform that is moving constantly moving from one direction to another. Uh, using coroutines too. Uh, here we have the collectibles that are, are very simple. They are only are rotating. A uh, camera component, this is very important, is for rendering um, for choosing what um, we want to to show of the of the game. Um, it will later use uh, in shaders for the rendering because it's very important for the transformation matrix uh, that we will use to to create the shaders. Uh, here we have box colliders. Uh, uh, here we have the function that calculates uh, if we are coll colliding with another box. It, it will change depending on the type of collider, and it will it will be more optimal depending on of which element we are using. Uh, finally, um, animation components uh, for, is using a, a coroutine to, to move some objects in the, in the scene. This is the component most important in the in the engine is the render component is for objects that we want to render to the game. So you have to to have a material, a mesh, um, and this is structure buffer administration that um, is um, his job is to load and the shader frame of frame to frame, so it's loaded with the the correct information every time. So if we are moving and the shader is moving to uh, and here we can see the update function of those. It reloads um, the materials um, on the buffer admin data 
to correct uh, rendering of, of the shader. Okay, we have the input class. Uh, it's very simple. It's only an um, array of booleans that uh, we are updating every frame. And we use uh, the key codes from JavaScript to know which um, keys are being pressed. Um, we create those this um, event key event board function from JavaScript to update the, the array in, in which case. Uh, this metric gel um, uh, package is mainly for mathematical structures. Vector tree are one of the main stru mathematical structure from every game engine, so it's very important to have a lot of function uh, for working with them, like uh, lerping a vector tree for moving or animating some position, distance between two vector, uh, dot product, uh, length. In the same way, um, we implemented uh quaternion function um, and we have a lot of function to work with them like multiply multiply or add matford it's the main important one it it is used to to build the matrix transformation functions and um it's mainly for rendering, so the user don't have to use them too too much. But for for rendering purpose, uh, it's very important. We can create the the orthographic um, matrix, uh, the translation matrix, uh, and everything that is needed to render the the um, the shaders. Message is uh, it's only for loading assets uh, dynamically so it's not that important uh, physics um, yeah, it uses um, the fix update call that we show after and in this uh, project physics only calculates the collisions between colliders uh, it grabs all the colliders from the scene and um, watches as if uh, they are colliding and make uh, the calls uh, on trigger enter for every component that has uh, those uh, collider components and we okay, have the scene the scenes uh, hold every game object um, and basically a game is a list of scenes that contains everyone contains a list of game objects and that's basically a game so we have we need to have functions to work with scenes so uh, we can get um, the game objects on on the scene by by name or reference and we have a scene manager to work with scenes and we can change scene or delete them after we We can create new scenes to uh, time. It's very, very important for synchronization of functions inside the game engine and for the game engine itself. Um, so we have a lot of data we need to upload every frame. So uh, that's what we are doing in this take function. And finally, we have the render package. It's the main package of the engine. Um, it has a lot of parts, but the, the, the main part is this abstract program class that holds um, the GL shaders that we use. Uh, a program is the combination of vertex and a fragment shader. So, we need to be sure that we are uploading every data that is inside the program uh, so inside the vertex and the fragment shader and um, 
we have here some functions that help us work with programs like uh, compiling uh, or uh, detecting the attributes of the of the shader and detecting the uniforms because uh, attributes and uniform are loaded uh, in different ways so um, it's very different in the game engine we created uh, three three shaders first we have this basic no texture shader and here we have the source code in GLSL format um, here we are multiplying the, the projection matrix with the view matrix and the world matrix and the size matrix with the position of the object to render in the correct position and for the fragment we are only using the normals to to render the colors of the col of the object we thought we have a line shader too uh, it's very different from from a 3d uh, render but uh, we will use his uh, this shader to render a grid that separates the y-axis so it's very important and finally this is more advanced uh, shader that use texture uh, to render a more complex uh, object here we have um, a little bit of light simulation so we use the fung function that consider considers ambient ambi light uh, and directional color and this function right here calculates uh, uh, the, the intensity of the light depending on the normals of the object so if the directional light is facing uh, an opposite direction of, of a normal it, it will be darker simulating the, the shadows of an object and we will use this uh, texture to the sampler to load um, the texture using the the coordinates of our or mesh and uh, we need some structure to work with uh, texture and matches uh, so we have one from every single one uh, textures uh, that are basically um, an image but with some data in WebGL, so we need to hide that information uh, from the user. A mesh is um, a JSON object that we can obtain the vertices and the normals and everything from that that object. And finally, we have the camera that we'll use to render everything. So let's watch the the project in action. Uh, I created a small game to show every part uh, of the game that I just talked. So here it is. Uh, here we have a list of all the game objects in the scene. We can see that it has uh, names and we can move uh, the scene with the key arrows and rotate uh, the camera constantly here is our main character it's uh, a box that use the normal shader and here we have a collectible and they are six, five of them they are they are rotating constantly and we have these boxes using the texture and the fog illumination we can see that are more bright on the side that and the directional light is facing uh, we have this deer using the, the basic shader uh, you can see that it's green in the y uh, green in the x and blue on the set value So let's uh, let's play. These are boxes that been uh, they are being animated with the 
the coroutines. So let's uh, use the jump coroutine to to jump these boxes. And we see that we are using the the function uh, package to to calculate the collision of, of the box uh, every frame so the box is not falling through the boxes and we need to move very precisely to this can make a wall jump on the boxes so every time we collide with something we can reset the jump and we can jump again so let's grab that and finally we have the last collectible so when we grab it we change the scene and here we have our final scene with uh, another list of, of objects so that's basically a little show of, of the game engine that I designed here we have the grid that separates the, the y-axis and it's using the the line shader that we I showed you before so that's it I hope you like it and 